Hello, thank you so much for joining me. You're here with data science teacher Brandon, and we're going to be discussing how and why we would want to tune the discrimination threshold in sklearn with Python. Okay, uh, a very powerful technique, a very easy way to get better scores designed for a specific problem. Okay, so let's get into discussing what is the discrimination thresholds. Okay, so let's get into talking about tuning the discrimination threshold with sklearn. What is a discretion hold? So if you're not familiar with how classification predictions work, we use a linear regression that's transformed transformed with a sigmoid function that turns the linear regression into an s curve between zero and one and now essentially this becomes a probability output of how confident we are in a specific class okay so we're saying you know if we're 50 percent uh, confident right here if we're 50 percent confident we're going to vote one way and if we're less than 50 percent we're going to vote the other way okay it's really just tuning really saying that that and this is really very close to where it happens at default uh, in SQLint. So we want to, if we can control this, we can say, you know, at the sacrifice of another prediction, we can be more confident in one of them, right? So it's a give and take thing, but we can control that balance. And it becomes very important in really making our models economic. Okay, so what does the discrimination hold uh, affect? And this is really affecting the confidence in a prediction. Okay, so if you're more confident in a prediction, you're going to get more of those right but you're also probably going to guess a little bit less. I'm not going to guess on everyone. I'm only going to guess on the ones that I'm very confident that I'm 80%. So you're going to miss more overall, but you're going to get more right of the ones that you guess. You're going to be more precise with your predictions. Okay, so what is tuning the discrimination threshold is really we're, we're moving that threshold between where we're going to say for or against a specific class. Okay, so as we tune this, as we turn up the discrimination thresholds, we are more confident in prediction one, you know, our class one, we're going to increase the blue right here. You can see this is the precision, right? It's gonna get more confident. It's not exactly perfect, but it's gonna become more confident right here. But at the sacrifice, as we become more confident in our predictions, we're gonna be making less, and then overall, we're gonna be getting less of our predictions. So this red, or sorry, this green line right here is the, recall so as our precision goes up the recall goes down now that happens because you're going to be making less guess and so i always remember this as precision is the how precise are my predictions recall is recalling the truth so how did i how many of the true values did i actually recall if i took less guesses i recalled less of them i got less of them in all but i was more confident about those predictions so so in the situation of if you're going to predict if someone defaults and you're going to predict if they default and you say that if they default it's a one and you predict it's a zero well you say that they're not going to default and they are right so you're going to lose a lot of money if you go the other way if you predict that they are going to default and they wouldn't have you're going to lose out a little bit of profit right you might lose out on five percent or something like that and so really it's like 20 times the difference in the cost of those hundred thousand dollar loan versus the five percent interest that you make on a loan you have to make 20 good loans to make up for one bad loan and so this is why we banks it's hard to get a loan from a bank because they have to be very high on this discrimination threshold uh to be profitable okay and that's really what we're going to try to do here is make our model or classification problem Profitable. And that's really, we have a cost to them. Uh, another example of this could be cancer, right? So you're going to pick, if someone has, if one is a cancer, if they have cancer and you say they don't, okay, well, they're not going to get any tests, they're not going to do anything, and that person would probably die, right? But if you predict that they do have cancer and they don't, you're going to scare that person. I'd, I'd be scared in that situation. But then what's going to happen is they're going to go with testing, nothing bad is going to happen, the hospital spends a little bit of money, but that person is not dead. Right? So, you know, the difference in cost there is very extreme. It emphasizes this point is that there's a different cost in our errors and that we want to make sure we are aware of that when we're building our classification model. So let's get in to see how we do this in Python. And say thank you so much for joining me today in the Python workbook. And this workbook will be available for you uh, to download on the website on datasimple.education. So this is really going to change. We're going to discuss how we can do a binary classification and focus on one class or the other, depending on which one we want to. Okay, so really want to define uh, what this is. Today we're going to be working on the Titanic class, simple uh, binary classification, the Titanic data sets, very classy, you probably worked on it already. 
And so here what we're going to do is we're going to predict, so, you know, if, if someone survives or doesn't, that will help us understand maybe who gets, who we can, you know, organize the help in a better situation. I'm trying to think about how we could make this a practical situation. So really, if we can put the boats, if we can better understand who's going to survive and not, we can better allocate the resources and more people will survive overall. So human life. So it's very important that we get this, this right, right? Um, so let's see if we can just, tune that discrimination threshold and see if we can save some lives on the Titanic. <laughs> okay, so uh, importing our standard data science libraries and some sklearn uh, libraries that we'll be using today, ignoring warnings and going through the Titanic data set. So I'm going to skip over a lot of the uh, pre-filtering you, you, or sorry, the pre-processing. You can look at it all. Uh, here, we're, we're, we're here today to talk about the um, discrimination threshold. So I'll leave the pre-processing of the Titanic data set to uh, you to figure out. Okay. If you're in this video, I have a feeling you understand this already. Okay, so train test split. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to do standardization, logistic regression. And then, so when we predict it, when we predict it by default, what happens is we do dot predict, right? So we all seen this before we get an extra CF73. I didn't do a lot of pre-processing, not the most amazing thing. Again, we're focusing on the discrimination threshold today. Okay, I uh, build a classification metric a matrix right here. I build a classification matrix right here just to take a look at this. And again, I'm not going to go over this because we're not focusing on that today. And so again, if we do a predict right here, log.predict, and we put that into the classification. Okay. If we look at this, we can see across the row, the recall, if we can, it's showing us as a percentage right here of this recall, how many we got right and how many we got wrong. It's going to help us to focus a little bit on our problem today, right? We're really, really trying to get this to be as accurate as possible. Okay. So we can see our train confusion matrix and our test confusion matrix before our tuning okay so 68 over 69 over here and 17 in the corner okay so we really want to try and get this to be as little you know small numbers here and really get this number to be as high as possible right so our, our predictions how precise our predictions this number can be we're not making as that many, that many mistakes right we're, we're going to be able to allocate our resources um so that we're being we're going to be able to allocate our resources so that we can Hopefully save some people on the Titanic. Okay. Uh, okay. So we're doing a discrimination threshold to look at this. This is so we're going to use the yellow brick dot classifier discrimination threshold from yellow brick to visualize this. And it's a great, great tool for visualizing. So we're going to do discrimination threshold dot fit dot poof. Okay. So that we can look at it, kind of like the dot show. And so what we're seeing here is what we saw in, in the presentation right here. So as we increase our threshold, we get a better precision and we get a worse recall right here. So in this situation, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it up to 67 right here, try and get the best right here. So I'm going to turn it up to 67. And the way that I do this is I do log dot predict problem. Know that there's two columns that come out of this. There's one for every class. If I had three classes, there'd be three columns. Okay. So what here I'm doing with this second column, which would be it's always it's always going to be alphanumeric. So zero, one, two, three, or A, B, C. So it's going to be I'm really focusing on, we're talking about prediction one here, right? So I'm focusing on the second column in this. So that's what I'm doing right here, getting all of the rows and then the second column of the predict prob prediction, okay? And that format allows for the linear algebra, okay? And so we won't get into that today though. Okay, so here what I'm doing, the simple way to do this is just, and the easiest way to do this is just a simple logic statement. I'm going to do, is it greater than 67 or not? Uh, how confident is it in the prediction? And I'm going to times it by one to change it from true to false. It would still work. Uh, Python sees trues and falses as ones and zeros, but uh, ones and zeros make a little bit more sense to me. So just times it by one to kind of clean it up visual, visually for us, us humans. Okay. Uh, putting that into then you can see here, we've significantly improved our precision score right here at the sacrifice of a recall, right? That was, that was the idea, right? Our, we're not, we're recalling less of the truth, but we're going to be more precise in our predictions. You can see on our test significantly better right here. Okay. And now we can see our improvement overall before and after the tuning has improved by, you know, roughly about five. But a really important thing here is our accuracy didn't improve and kind of got a little bit worse overall, right? A little tiny bit. And so the idea here is that discrimination threshold tuning is a give and take relationship. We're not going to be able to improve our accuracy. We're going to be able to improve a precision or recall, and those will have a very real world cost or difference in real world cost that we'll be able to then make our model more economic um, by doing this extra tuning to our model. Okay, 
So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below if you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one. And I, and I will see you in the next ML Tips video at datasimple.education. Bye until next time.